Welcome to Canada in October. <laughs> it's cold. Yeah. Anyway, this video is going to be about modes on the camera. Uh, there are various modes. We're going to go through what the different modes do. Um, they're all different categories of modes. So you have your exposure mode dial, and then you have your, uh, your well, light metering modes, and then you've got your drive modes. So we're going to go through those and... Uh, show you what each one does and how it changes things and in case you don't shoot pentax sorry but if you do shoot pentax there are some exclusive modes that you will not find on any other brand of camera period yeah so we're gonna get into that right away and uh, let's go just do it so starting off, we've got your typical auto mode where the camera picks all the settings for itself and you have no control over any of it. And then moving on from there, we've got the program mode, which Pentax does allow uh, operational overrides, uh, which they, can, they call the hyper program, uh, which is like a program shift. So you can change the aperture. Uh, if you change the aperture, the camera immediately switches into aperture value mode. And if you change the shutter speed, it immediately turns into TV mode, which I will explain TV, shutter speed, uh, that mode itself. Other camera brands call it S mode for shutter. Pentax does not. Um, and if you change both the aperture and the shutter speed, then it turns into TAV mode, which is a Pentax exclusive. But we'll get to that in a second. This one here, SV, is your sensitivity value. This is where you set the specific ISO of where you want to shoot. That will not change. The camera will then change the aperture and the shutter speed and leave the ISO at whatever you've set it to, which is a Pentax exclusive. TV is called time value. Uh, it's the exact same as shutter speed. Shutter is the time the camera takes to open and close the shutter. So Pentax Nomkincher, or however you pronounce that, uh, Nomkulich, whatever. Pentax's word for it is time value. Then you've got the aperture value mode here, which just like every other camera, you open and close, uh, you know, how large and small the circle or the iris of the lens is going to be when you take the shot. And then we have the Pentax exclusive, sorry, the second Pentax exclusive TAV mode, which is time and aperture value. So you dial in the shutter speed, you dial in the aperture, the camera then changes the ISO for you. And then your usual manual mode where you have to control the ISO, the aperture and the shutter speed yourself. And then you've got your bulb mode, which allows you basically unlimited uh, shooting time on the shutter and you have your X, which is the flash sync speed mode. So this will allow you to shoot up to, on the Pentax K3 Mark III, allows you up to one 200th of a second shutter speed when you're using flash. Unless it's a high speed capable flash, then you can shoot faster than that. But the native sync speed uh, on older Pentax cameras is one 180th of a second. On the K3 Mark III, it's one 200th of a second. And then you have your five, customizable user modes and what do all these do well let's find out not the user modes what do auto p s v t v a v t a v m b what do those do well that's what i'm going to show you so here we have full automatic mode and in full auto if you pay attention down here i'm going to change if i Go to adjust the aperture, which is here. You'll notice it's not changing at all. If I go in the front here to change the shutter speed, it doesn't change. Over here, you can see I'm in auto and I'll change the ISO. Now watch, when I change the ISO, watch the shutter speed. So those, that's the only parameter you have. And as you keep getting higher and higher, in order for it to have a proper exposure, it changes the f-stop or the aperture as you increase or decrease the ISO. So that's auto. Now let's go into program mode. Now, as I was saying, program mode, I've just changed the shutter. So now it's in TV, right? Let me go back to P mode, change the shutter speed again with the front dial, and you'll notice it changes to TV mode. 
Now if I change the aperture, you'll see it changes to aperture value mode. And you can see the aperture changing down here. Now let's do this again. So this time I'll change the shutter speed and the aperture. And now it's turned into M because I have full control over the aperture and the shutter speed. So it doesn't actually go into TAV mode. It goes into full out uh, manual mode. However, if I activate auto ISO and now start moving this around, now I'm in TAV, as you can see here. So there you go. And the next one is sensitivity value. So the only thing you have control over is the ISO. Nothing else changes. That's it. Next one here is TV. So I can change the shutter, aperture, or sorry, the ISO changes along with the shutter speed, aperture value, change the aperture, ISO changes automatically, shutter speed stays the same. And then you've got the TAV mode, which you already saw. You can change the aperture and the shutter speed, ISO changes on the fly. And there's manual mode where you change everything yourself. And then you've got bulb mode. So I would need to crank this way up here. So I'm at I think like three minutes or something crazy. So yeah, bulb mode is a little different. Let's bring the ISO down here. Yeah. Bulb mode is different. Uh, what am I at? One second. So it starts at one second. And let's bring the aperture down here. So it starts at one second and goes from there. So 30 seconds is what you would get as the slowest shutter speed in uh, any of the other modes. And minimum of one second, pretty much to 10 minutes, I believe, in bulb mode. And then you've got your flash sync speed. So you see here it jumped straight to 1 200th of a second. That cannot be changed. Let's change the aperture. Can't change the shutter at all because it's locked into the maximum flash sync speed. Now the other thing that I wanted to show, let me just put this back into, uh, yeah, let's do manual. So up here is your metering modes. So right now, it's in average metering. And if we change that to center and move the camera, you'll notice down here, the exposure changed just a tad. Move that again. And that's for the center area. Now, back here, you'll see there's it's a dark uh, thing there, right? So let's change this over to spot and let's see what happens when we bring this down just a tad. You'll notice that this is now changing as I move across because it's only picking up that small area in the center. So as I move this around, this is a lot more sensitive now. So this is changing the way it's recording the light. And then on the K3 Mark III, there is highlight, uh, highlight protected me or highlight weighted metering, which is not as sensitive. It's looking at the entirety of the frame and picking out the brightest parts and it's adjusting the exposure to protect the brightest parts of the photo that you're going to be taking. And now the big one. So your drive modes. So here is single frame shooting mode, which when you're using this, it's just a single shot. Holding down the shutter, nothing. Just a single shot, one at a time. And then you've got your high speed. And then you've got your medium. And then you've got your low speed. And 
And then you have various bracketing modes. Just press once and it takes all three shots all at once. I bracketed for different brightnesses. Uh, I think it was two exposure values. Next drive mode is mirror lockup shooting, which this already is on because, well, it's in live view, so. And this is mirror lockup with. Okay, so you press once, locks up the mirror, press again. That's the way I have it set. And then uh, it takes a shot. And then you've got your composite mode. And within composite mode, you have various parameters that you can set. You can always play around with those if you wish. Uh, info. So you've got average, additive, bright. Eddie Summers did a great video on this, actually. Uh, save interim images, which is saving each sequence of the image. Continuous shooting, yes or no. And the number of continuous shots. You can save the blended images, which is what I usually do. Take one. And as you can see, it layers the original image you took. And I'll just say it's complete. Technically that mode is multi-exposure composite mode. And the next one is your interval shooting mode where as you can see, there's a lot of different things written on here. So you've got your interval time, the number of shots for the interval. When you want to start the interval, you can have it preset for a specific time, or you can shoot right away. Uh, you know, so you have your start time, zero, zero, or you can change that to you know one minute and the camera will start firing after one minute. And if you want to change the settings, just hit info and you have all your different parameters of how you want to actually shoot. You can have autofocus active or uh, just set set it manually and just shoot away. So with the interval shooting, uh, let's see here. Haven't used this in a while, so I want to shoot now. So we shoot, well, actually instead of boring you with waiting and waiting and waiting, uh, basically it'll just keep firing over and over on a, as a timed interval of shooting. Uh, let's see, and you can also use remote uh, with a three second timer, zero seconds, uh, self timer, 12 seconds or two seconds, or just use the shutter button and fire away. And the next one is your interval composite mode, which is taking a series of shots and then combining them all together in camera. And here, once again, you have your average additive bright. And I do highly suggest that you click that little thing up above uh, to see Eddie Summer's video. Absolutely fantastic walkthrough of the exact, this whole thing. I'm not gonna redo what he's already done because he did an absolutely fantastic job. And uh, you can save the interim images as well, you know, the blended images. And you have fixed time release, so it does not skip shots when exposure is not possible at set interval and performs shooting when it becomes possible. So the issue that a lot of people have is when they're, they miss, they misconfigure the timing based on the actual shutter speed. So sometimes the interval shooting just won't work. It just stops because it's not possible to shoot certain things. So this prevents that from happening. Uh, you know, it will not skip shots. It'll actually do the entire interval. Um, let's see here. And then again, the operation of autofocus on or off. And that is getting to know the modes on your camera. So if you like the video, leave a like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Always helps out. If you want to support the channel, that info is at the bottom of the description. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. 
Got to put my camera back to how it was before, yo. And that's it. You'll see me, yeah, I'm pointing back at me, <laughs> in the next video. I'm out.